if you're wondering what type of breed your dog is, there are plenty of tests out there to help. The question, how accurate are they? Yeah, the iTeam's Christina Hager is unleashing the truth behind those at-home DNA tests. She's a Woodle, which is a soft-coated Wheaton and Poodle mix. What's in a breed, anyway? 100% German Shepherd. <laughs> Turns out pet owners are willing to shell out a lot. I have no idea what breed he is. Not at all. To find out, market research shows pet DNA testing is a more than $345 million industry, on track to jump 85% by 2030. Hi. Easy. Hello. No job. Meet Jasmine. Her roots are a bit of a mystery. Shepherds have a history of um, hip issues. So we wanted the DNA testing to find out, you know, what her history was. So owner Michelle Leininger got a test kit that retails for about $80. And it made sense when the results showed part German Shepherd, but there were 14 other breeds listed. And some of them? How oh, is she pot? 4% Chihuahua. It just didn't make any sense. So the WBZI team brought over more test kits from different companies. They had a girl. To double check. Here we go. Good girl. Good girl. And even triple check the results. They had a girl. Then we asked Michelle to swab her own cheeks. All right, there's one cheek. Good girl. The results? All of Jasmine's came back with some German Shepherd, but the percentages varied from 65% to just 29%. Aside from that, the three companies showed a puzzling hodgepodge of other breeds. One threw in Great Pyrenees, another Siberian Husky, Korean Jindo, and the list goes on. And then there was Michelle. Michelle came back as 28% Bulldog, 40% Border Collie, and 32% Cane Corso. Okay. I think that that is a red flag for sure. Dr. Lisa Moses is a veterinarian and bioethicist with Harvard Medical School. Part Cane Corso. What do you think? Yeah, I see you giggling. Yeah, that's a real red flag. Um, a company should know if they've in any basic way analyzed a dog's DNA that that is not a dog. DNA My Dog sent the I-Team a response clarifying that it only found canine DNA in one of Michelle's two swabs. All right, one each. As for the second one, the company said the second sample did in fact yield canine DNA. The results provided would not be possible in a human sample. Dr. Moses says the science is fuzzy. The first problem, she says, there are no official definitions for different breeds and therefore no exact genetic codes to match them. There isn't necessarily a gold standard answer for what your dog is. A breed is something that we've decided is based essentially on the way a dog looks but that doesn't necessarily mean that we know exactly what their genes are going to look like. We asked all the companies for an explanation for Jasmine's varied results. Only Wisdom Panel replied. Each pet DNA testing company uses its own reference populations. Our breed detection system consistently outperforms other approaches. My worry about people making medical decisions based on one of these tests. Would you? Test your dog again? No, I wouldn't waste the money. And her own test results? Leininger says that told her all she needs to know. Would you see yourself as a bulldog? <laughs> some, some people would agree with that at times, but no, no. Dr. Moses and some of her colleagues have called on lawmakers to set standards and regulations for pet DNA labs and also to require them to share their databases with each other for more consistent results. For the I-Team, Christina Hager, WBZ News. All right, now that was super interesting. Yes, because, I mean, how yeah. many people have done that? Millions. And she was a bulldog. What would you be if you <laughs> were, you know, if you uh, did the test? Maybe like a doodle, something a that doodle? is like okay. mixed and right. serious and friendly and always busy. You? All right, um, I would be, my wife would say whatever is the most <laughs> annoying breed there is. There's no annoying dog. That would dog. be me. Anyway. There are no annoying dogs. No. CBS anyway. Evening.